Hello and welcome to God's Minute. I'm Pastor Jonathan Conrad and I am the senior pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. This week, we have been looking at the book of Ruth. Today, we get to the final chapter of Ruth. So let's see how it ends. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. So what an amazing end to the story of Ruth and Naomi and Boaz. And the reason I wanted to read to you this passage is because I want to remind you that Ruth, Naomi, Boaz all play a part in the story of King David. And we know that King David plays a part in the story of Jesus Christ. When we get to the New Testament, it was very important for Matthew to connect David's lineage with Jesus because the people believed that their next king, their Messiah, had to come from the family of David. But there is a deeper connection that I want to share with you. Remember, Ruth is a foreigner. She is from Moab. Moab and Israel did not get along. They were bitter enemies. They hated one another. And yet, and yet it is Ruth, a foreigner, who now plays an important and vital role in the story of David, the story of Jesus, and the story of us. Last week, we talked about the book of Jonah. And in the book of Jonah, it was Nineveh, another enemy of Israel that is saved by God from total destruction. This week, we hear how Moab, a bitter enemy of Israel, is part of the story of Jesus, a part of our story. So what does that mean? I believe it means that God is a God of inclusion. And this was very important for people to hear back in the time of Jesus and even before then as people were sharing the story of Ruth. Because there was a big sense of pride from people of Israel knowing that they were the chosen ones. But what they learn from stories like Jonah and Ruth is that God's inclusion also includes the Gentiles, those who are not Israelites, those who may have been considered enemies. God has a part in the story for them. I want you to think about two countries, two religions, two nationalities that you don't like. And now I want you to replace those two countries in your mind with Nineveh and Moab. What did God do for those countries? What do you think God can do for the countries, the people that you do not like? There is a reason that they kept stories like Jonah and Ruth in the Hebrew scriptures. They had a choice. They could have taken them out. They could have removed all mention of foreigners when it came to the story of God. But the writers and compilers did not do that. They kept these stories in for a reason. But I believe that it is they wanted people to know that God means to include all of us in the story. We all have a part in the story of God. And I hope that you will join me in continuing God's story. Thank you very much for joining me today. I wish you well this weekend. I will see you next week for another edition of God's Minute. Take care.